Now, it's fair to say there's not many five-star hotels in Benidorm. In fact, a lot of them on the outskirts. But I've managed to find one that is in pretty much the centre of Benidorm. It's literally just over there. It's perched on a cliff and it's a five-star boutique hotel. And I've got a little bit of a walk to get to it. Come on. There did used to be steps where well, you can still see the steps, but you now no longer can walk up there. It's all gated off which is a little bit of a shame because if you want to come down to the beach, you've got to come all the way down here to enjoy the beautiful beach. And you've got to walk up this hill. Blimey, and I'm sweating. Halfway there. So you might be asking, where is my case? Well, I have already checked in. I didn't want to do that on the video. We've been highly embarrassed in struggling up that hill. Well, we finally made it. And interestingly, right next to the hotel where I stayed last year, if you want to see that video, um, the link is in the description. I really like this hotel and I had a really nice balcony. But this is the hotel I'm staying in tonight. They do have some balconies, three of them actually. They don't have any balconies on the front though. But look at this view already. So we can only imagine what it's going to be like from our room. Look at this view. Love the seating. Looks like it's gold. Wow. That's nice. Even the reception is on a really nice big gold table. So, bar area and the restaurant, which I've booked a table for tonight. Do they have a restaurant that looks out to sea like that? They do have a spa here and they do have a pool which we'll check out in a moment. Let's check into my room. And it's literally right next to the lift. Here we go. By the way, it took me three times to get in here because every time I accidentally put this near my phone, it cancels it out. So I've had to go downstairs to reception. How many times? Well, I'm gonna say it, wow. Look at this. Now being a boutique hotel, the hotel is pretty small, as are the rooms actually, but it's the view that is incredible. Look at that. I can open the window so I can actually hear the sea. Well, there's no balcony here for me, although I can just lean out the window and just uh, take in that view, which is amazing. And I can have the window open so I can hear the sea. Even actually with the window shut, I can still hear the sea. Anyway, let's do the room tour. Although it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. Let's just uh, shut it to just a little bit. So straight away, a nice little table with some chairs. And a little note. Now, before you ask, I know they do this for every room because I've been speaking to a couple of other people who are staying here as well, but saying thank you very much for choosing as your holiday destination. We offer this warm welcome, the whole of the staff. Look at that. And they have given me some very nice, oh, it's not champagne, it's carver. <laughs> I'm not complaining. And um, well, look at this. It's like gold on top of the chocolate. I have no idea what that is, but. Um, is that bits of Oreo? Very nice comfy chairs. Although there's a little bit of an epic fail here because as you look out, you see this big thick bit of plastic in the way. Obviously it's the windows, I know, but um, it does spoil your view a little bit. Not to mention these chairs, considering it's a fine style hotel, um, are a little bit scratched. Is it supposed to look like that? Coffee station over here. Look at these tiny little, because I can't exactly have a cup of tea in them. Oh, there's the Nespresso stuff. These are obviously, what are these? Oh, green tea. Is there any normal tea? Very small kettle, a bit like a travel kettle. Now I do like my coffee, but it's a shame they couldn't have put some bigger cups in there because I do like my tea. Is there a fridge here? I wonder, do you know what? I thought, is that a fridge? Yes, it is. Now we're talking. Wow, look at that. Is this censored? I don't think so. 
Very good. Well, I'm, I'm assuming as all this is premium drinks, including some proper champagne, that this will have to be paid for. There's a lot of alcohol in there for one person. A couple of glasses there. I like the way they've hidden this. A little laundry bag, some complimentary bottles of water and some details about the hotel. Wardrobe over here with a safe. Trusty iron, no hairdryer. Maybe that's in the bathroom. This bed looks very luxurious, including the ultra thick pillows. There's one, there's two, there's three. There's four pillows on this bed. And it's not that big for a double bed. I'll just take my shoes off. Yeah, it's a small double bed. But as I'm the only one here, I'm not gonna complain. Although, why do they ever put these on the beds? Who's gonna use them? Good job the sea's loud because I can hear people's music from the other room, so the room's not very soundproof. One thing I've noticed with the design of this room, there's no um, sideboard table, but around this side is where everything is. Kind of looks a little bit messy, really, doesn't it? That little radio, phone, and a side light. Yeah, it's a shame there's no side table there because nowadays you want your phone by your bedside, don't you? Huge TV. Love the fact this is curved as well, does it? Oh, it does. It does come out so I can move it so I can see it better from the bed. I'm worried it's gonna fall off the wall. I don't wanna push it back like that. How do you? <laughs> like that. And the light switches <laughs> are around here. Oh, that light does work. Oh, so this is where you put your phone then. You've gotta just kind of reach round to get it. All these lights are going to be confusing. Which ones turn on and which turn off. Interestingly, they've only got one little lamp in here, in the whole room, which is a little bit of a shame, because you know how much I like my lamps. Don't know whether you can see it, but it's a glass window. That's the bathroom. Let's go and check it out, because there's not much really here, apart from a nice little photo. Ooh, and some artwork. So here is the bathroom. Let's turn on some lights. Hang on, what? Infrared. What's going on? That's hot. How very odd. That's on a timer, can you hear that? How very, very strange. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. It reminds me of like when you go to a restaurant and it keeps the food warm. <laughs> so it's a shower and bath, but it's also much, much more. First of all, checking out the sink. Look at that, that is really nice. Couple of glasses there, complimentary shampoos. Here is the trusty hair dryer. In Spain, they love to have the plug sockets really close to water, don't they? I've also got a phone in here if I need it. There's lots of signage everywhere that I guess I need to read. If you need a more powerful hairdryer, then contact reception. Wow, well, what's wrong with that? I've got a little vanity mirror. I've no idea what that is. That's really loose. Is that like a lamp? There's a door here for the toilet. Oh, look, hidden in here. I've got some bathrobes and also some slippers. Very nice, love the marble. Shut that up. Now this is the weirdest thing because they've got the shower in with the bath. And it's one of these showers that are, I forgot what they call them, power showers, but they've, they've got jets that literally go absolutely everywhere. Ooh, there's a little shelf there. So it's like a rainfall shower, but it's like insanely close to the bath. So one person could be in the bath, obviously, and then the other person could be having a shower. But this is one of those whirlpool baths. Look at this. I have no idea how this works. And there's my towel. Look, you can actually see through into the bedroom. The only problem with these baths, with all the whirlpool action, is that it kind of feels really uncomfortable on your bum. And I don't understand why there's these silver things on the bottom. They don't feel like they're jets. No sliding around in the bath then. 
And if you want your modesty from your partner, then you can bring them down, even though they're still pretty much see-through. It's got a nice glass door, shut that up. And scuff marks on the walls. The walls actually are really dirty. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, please make sure you do give it a thumbs up and please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It helps me out more than you know. Right, let's go and check out the rest of the hotel. Now being a boutique hotel, it is pretty small. So we'll go upstairs to go and check out the gym and also the swimming pool, come on. up the stairs shall we by the way the church is literally just there so you hear it ring on the hour whether it does that through the night i can't look at that <laughs> that's timing or what that's is that six o'clock no that's half past five so that's on the half hour and on the hour they call it a swimming pool i don't think it is a swimming pool just because the hotel is so small it's this way few people up here sunbathing. Ah, it's not a swimming pool, is it? It's a little plunge pool. It's very nice. It's a bit like a sauna in here though. But look at the view you've got. It's amazing. And there's a gym it should be up here. Massage room and gym. All right, so massage room is there, and massage. And here is the spa room gym. As always, there's nobody working out. Look at the view. Look at that, you can get on this running machine and have the best view of Benidorm. That is amazing. Bit of a jacuzzi up here, very nice. I don't think there is many saunas that have that kind of view in Benidorm. In fact, this is probably the only one. What's that? A, a jet wash for your feet before you go in there? I don't know. Lovely view though of the church. Isn't it a shame that these windows don't come down or something or slide across? Do they slide across? In fact, they've been broken, I think. Maybe once upon a time they did, but it doesn't look like it. Although this does look like this pulls all the way back. Steam room in here. It's not on. More fresh towels. So I will show you what dinner is about later on. And I've also got breakfast booked in for the morning. But for now, I think I might get in there, but you don't want to see that. And it's time for dinner. And I've got a view and a half. Although that's really annoying me. Candle's a bit wonky. All right, let's have a look at the menu. Nice menu. Oh. It was a nice menu until all the um, all that. That makes it look cheap. Dinner menu. So, chef's appetizer to open the mouth. Is this like a set menu? Fifty-five euros per person. It's not too busy in here, though. It's a lovely restaurant. Can you believe it's actually nine o'clock at night? So I've just ordered a water. Yikes! First, I've got some olive oil and some bread to dip in. So this is gonna be a taster uh, menu, so all the portions are gonna be pretty small. Let's see how small. Well, first, it's a selection of cheeses. And obviously these are very small because it's just a tasting menu. We've got Parmesan, we've got Brie, Edam, something else with some nuts. What's that? What the heck is that? It's got bubbles on it. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's breadcrumb. I've actually just received my butter. Look how cute that is. It's still very cold though. Not likely to be able to spread that. Or well, next up, prawn with no sauce, just a prawn. I've got to use my hands, I guess. Pull the head off. 
It's very succulent. Mm, nice. Campy would love this. She loves fish. Thankfully, they've given me the little wipe for your hands. Mmm, lemon. Portions are getting a bit bigger. This is sea bass. Never had sea bass before. Let's give it a whirl. It's a fillet, a bit like salmon, the way salmon served. There's bones in it. It was nice, but it was just very dry and a bit bland, eating it on its own. Next we have lamb with shallots. Can't say I'm a big fan of lamb or shallots. So this would be interesting. See how tender it is. It's probably about three mouthfuls of lamb. A lot of it is quite fatty, actually. Sounds like I'm moaning, I'm not. No, it's nice. Well, lamb was classed as the main. It's starting to get a bit darker now. Dessert, chocolate, white chocolate, and sorbet. Let's try the chocolate cake first. It's like a fudge cake. Oh yeah, that's good. The sorbet cleanses the palate. <laughs> and the white chocolate, whatever this is, which is a bit burnt. It's like a white chocolate cake. Better the chocolate fudge cake though. That's nice. So dinner was finished off with a coffee and a Baileys, which was kind of nice. Um, I don't know whether I would probably have that kind of meal again. Tasting menus are required taste, I guess. For me, I still felt hungry afterwards. Oh, and they did do a turndown service and gave me these sweet little chocolates. I've got an amazing view out of that window and I'll see you in the morning. Wow, what a way to start your morning looking out to this. And of course, enjoying the smallest cup of tea in the world. Now I know before you say anything, this is for an espresso, but um, I really like my tea in the morning and I did have a tea bag. I do have a little bit of creamer. So I've made the tiniest cup of tea in the world. It'll be gone within two sips, but um, that is so cute. I kind of like it. Call it a tea chino. Let's go and get some breakfast. Morning, does this sit anywhere? Yeah. So I can order whatever I want off the menu, but they also serve you this first. So we've got a selection of meats, hams, pastries look at this for a fruit bowl wow and also that's tomato juice and then I've gone for scrambled eggs although to be fair that looks actually a bit dry for scrambled eggs which is a bit of a shame yeah they're not the best I'm not a chef but they're a little bit overcooked the only problem with having breakfast out here is you get eyed up by the seagulls and they do come down. They just went over to that lady's table and decided to nick some of her food. So the Villa Venezia here in Benidorm, it has an amazing location. First of all, let's just talk about the room it was absolutely amazing. However, when you look a little bit closer, you can start to see the age of the building like scratch marks on the furniture. The carpet on the stairs looks absolutely filthy and worn out, which definitely needs to be changed. Now upstairs where the swimming pool stroke plunge pool is, again, that felt really dirty. And actually part of the building was falling down or was broken. And also, as I was coming back from there yesterday, I had trouble getting back in because the door wasn't sitting right or something. I couldn't actually get back into the building. Dinner last night was really nice. I've never tried a tasting menu before. The building does seem to be showing its age and it is very rough around the edges. Now, let's be honest, five stars does not mean absolute luxury and pristine. It's all about the amenities, which I used to get confused about because I thought a five-star hotel, it's supposed to be the most amazing hotel, 
most amazing luxury, but it's actually to do with the amenities. It's got a gym, it's got a swimming pool, it's got a plunge pool, it's got a restaurant, it's got everything that a five-star hotel requires. And it's gonna sound bad, but I actually prefer the RH Hotel next door, which is a four-star and seems a little bit more luxury. Yes, the restaurant was nice and it has the most amazing views. Breakfast on the balcony was great, apart from those scrambled eggs. They were dry, they were rubbery, and they just didn't taste very nice. Added to the fact the seagulls were trying to get my food the whole time, ruined the experience for me. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm moaning because I did enjoy my stay here. Tell me what you thought in the comments. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see this hotel, which is right next door, the RH, do click the video here. It's on the travel day video. And if you want to see me stay in another five-star hotel in Dubai, why not click the video here? Do give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.